Aloha collaborators. You know, before I start, um, I'm just going to ask you to show me with a raise of hands. Who here loves collaboration? Yeah, right, came to the right place. You know, collaboration has this wonderful ability to empower communities to learn how to sustain themselves. And it's by doing projects that bring together renewable energy, food security, interdisciplinary education, as well as entrepreneurship, that teaches us how to take our natural resources and, um, and our skills within all of us that we all have to give to the world and make our world a better place to work together. And I've traveled the world in search of these projects, and I'd like to share a couple of my stories with you today. So uh, I'd like to start here in Hawaii by showing you a brief video. <laughs> The echoing of chants is a land speaking. The connection of Aina and people becomes parallel. The built environment moves with the land. Water is key for life to flourish. Wind blows from life to read. Light illuminates for life to shine. Hale Pili Honua. Hale, a built structure. Pili, connection to connect. Honua, earth and land. In Hawaiian poetics, the house is like a gourd that holds a necessity of life. For life to prosper, sustaining life from the summits of the mountains to the shoreline we play at. What we do in the ocean affects the land. What we do on land affects the ocean. Just as the name of the house represents the connection of the home with nature, the design is also deeply connected with land through the elements of the sun, wind, and water. This connection promotes sustainability because the house functions in harmony with naturally available resources. Hale Pili Honua, Hawaii's contribution to the future of design. Hale Pili Honua was a collaborative project that I had the great fortune to be a part of. We were a group of University of Hawaii students learning to collaborate to build this house, which was ultimately going to go to compete in the 2011 U.S. Department of Energy Solar Decathlon, which happened on the National Mall last month. So you guys are curious, how did we do in this competition? Well, after over two years of hard work and over 100 people involved, all we got was this model. That's it? Well, not exactly. We developed a lot of collaborative capacity. We challenged the university as well as the community to learn how to collaborate among three different campuses and many different disciplines. So we had architecture and engineering students learning how to effectively communicate together to design this home, which some of us here may know is a feat in itself. Uh, we also had them working with uh, construction students who were learning innovative construction techniques to build this extremely innovative house um, in preparation. And then they also worked with computer science students who developed an integrated home software system. We also worked collaboratively with agriculture and culinary students to help us address food security issues at the home level. And finally, our business students were able to effectively reach out to the community to develop industry partnerships and a true Team Hawaii, a team that represented this state as a world leader in research and technology for green technologies. So this house looks cool, right? And jam-packed with innovations. But you know, this is not the best product out of this project. The most important thing that came out of this project are our capable graduates, who now, when they enter the workforce, are going to have this mindset of how do we work together across disciplines with people that we might not speak the same language with in order to come up with these solutions to solve our world's problems. Now I want to take you on a trip around the world to another island. Uh, welcome to the twin island nation of Antigua and Barbuda in Eastern Caribbean. We're here, I served as a Peace Corps volunteer with the Agroprocessors Association last year. Now I was here working with the makers of the world famous hot sauces and jams and jellies of the tourism market there in Antigua. And I was uh, tasked to introduce uh, 
sanitation practices so that they could better compete in the US and European markets. But this really wasn't their problem. They were competing in a globalized market in which their high production costs, including energy, made it very difficult for them to compete with multinational companies. But this is beside the point. There's over a million pounds of mango that goes to waste every year just because they can't eat them all or preserve them. And trust me, I tried to eat them all and I couldn't. <laughs> so a collaborative group of students from Kansas State University proposed to me something called solar drying. So a local woodshop teacher volunteered to work with me to build a prototype with his students. And we came up with something kind of like this. And uh, it was very impressive, and many of the other schools were excited about it as well, and they wanted to build one too. So through a small uh, crowdfunding effort, we were able to raise the funds to build uh, solar dryers in every school in the country. Granted, there's only 10 schools, but come on, give me a break. <laughs> in these workshops, we trained the students how to build, operate, and market these solar dryers. And they were really engaged with this project because for the first time, they were building something that was tangible and hands-on that they could actually use to improve their own lives and to even make business out of it. We invited the community, as well as those agro-processors, to come learn with us as we experimented with these solar dryers. We experimented with all kinds of fruits and vegetables and even fish and meat. And we found that if dried properly, after about 12 hours in the direct sunlight, you can extend the shelf life of produce up to a year and increase its value 10 times. We even experimented with something called fruit leather, which is uh, pureed fruits poured into a tray lined with plastic wrap. When it dries, it peels off like an all-natural fruit roll-up. Super yummy. Now, you guys probably thought I came here just to tease you with all these pictures of wonderful fruit, but um, I actually brought for you all a sample of uh, the uh, TEDx Honolulu 2011 vintage solar dried fruit. They're all in your, your gift bag, so please enjoy. <laughs> so back to the story. There was so much product coming out of these workshops that the Ministry of Agriculture in the country offered us the opportunity to present our project at the 2010 Mango Festival. We were able to sell about $500 of product and with those proceeds, we built three additional solar dryers, which were presented to the winners of the agro-processors competition. So now they can use the dryers to make business out and further expand the project. And you know, the most beautiful thing about this project was because there were so many people involved all along, and they all had something equal to contribute and equal to benefit from it, it gave me a lot of free time to focus on what's really important, like carnival. <laughs> Come on, it's cultural integration. It's part of our job as a Peace Corps volunteer. <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, by the end of the project, we had calculated that we directly impacted 17% of the entire country's population just because of the collaborative nature of this project. So now I want to bring you back to Hawaii, where our situation is not much different than it is in Antigua. We also have a wide variety of people that could equally contribute and benefit from a project like this. Homeowners can take advantage of the solar dryers to preserve their surplus tropical produce, produce from their own backyards. Farmers can use them to add value to their produce and to reduce their waste. And retailers can use the dried products to satisfy the growing by local demand in the market. We already have an established market here in Hawaii for dried fruits. So why import dried fruit from Thailand and the Philippines filled with who knows what preservatives and food additives when we can just do it right here with our own natural resources. A living example, oh, sorry. Uh, educators can also use these solar dryers to bring together all of the different disciplines and to add that entrepreneurial spirit to, uh, to their curriculum. And the most important people here is our youth. They need these kinds of tangible projects that show them how they can utilize their natural resources to improve their own lives and their communities. A living example of this is Uncle Clay's House of Pure Aloha. Some of you guys might know Uncle Clay. This is a local social enterprise and treat shop. Uncle Clay and his nephew Bronson embrace collaborative business. And they see solar drying as an opportunity not just to generate revenues, but to connect the community 
with local farmers and the food that we eat. Their business strategy is to spread pure aloha. And this pure aloha can be summarized in, in this symbol right here, which some of you may know, American Sign Language is I love you, so two I love yous. And you put them together. You guys can go ahead and try, try it. You put them together and you see what you get, which is a heart with a roof on top. It's the house of pure aloha. And the most beautiful thing is that you can share it with your neighbor. And we can spread it all over the world. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And this, I believe, is the future of business. And it, it, it's all interconnected. It's all related. But you know, this principle is not limited just to solar drying. It's also about encouraging diversification in agriculture and business, such as encouraging our local agriculture community to grow high profit margin tea in marginal agriculture land, and about the de developing infrastructure to find use of our waste, such as growing mushrooms out of used coffee grounds. Mushrooms love our garbage. And most importantly, it's a group of University of Hawaii students that were learning how to collaborate to build their dream house. So here we are today, sitting in this room, chilling on our computers, collaborating. We all have something special to offer to the world. And I believe that through true collaboration, we can make a better place for Hawaii and for the world. Mahalo.